In today's video, I'm gonna give you a detailed step-by-step -step breakdown of exactly what you need to do to qualify for a Mode airdrop. Now, Mode is a new Ethereum layer two that's partnering with Optimism. They got a $6 million grant from them and they are calling themselves the Modular DeFi L2. So Mold's whole thing is to try and create a fairer, more inclusive DeFi system and they've introduced different incentive structures for developers that will do things like share sequencer fees and give airdrops to developers among other things. But they're also running an airdrop campaign for users so you can participate in that portion of it. So if you want to participate in this mode airdrop, there's a number of tasks that you need to complete as soon as possible. So I'm going to walk you through all of that step by step. Before we do that though, I do need to just highlight that in the terms and conditions, there's a number of different countries that are going to be excluded from this airdrop. So you won't be eligible to claim if you live in any of these countries on the list here. And there's actually quite a few of them, including the US, Canada, and well, really a ton of countries. I'm not gonna list all of them. Now, I am lucky that I don't live in one of the restricted countries, but I think it is possible, technically, if you want to, to use something like a VPN. Not saying you should, but it's possible. Anyways, let's break down now exactly what you need to do to qualify for this mode airdrop. When you first go to the app, you're going to need to use a referral code to get in. So I'm gonna drop mine down below. And if you wanna use that, it helps out the channel. Now, when you connect your wallet for the first time, if you have a history of doing transactions on Ethereum, of bridging to L2s, of using a bunch of different DeFi applications, then you will already have some points waiting for you. However, even if you have zero points or if you're just using a completely fresh wallet to farm this airdrop, up, you can still get in basically on the ground floor because this just launched a couple of days ago. So the first thing to do to secure some points, if you don't have any historical points, is to bridge to the mode network. Now, the more that you bridge, obviously the more points you're going to get. So for this, I bridged 0.25 ETH, although you can select other tokens if you want to, including USDT, USDC, and wrapped Bitcoin. Now, for the official main bridge, you have to bridge from the Ethereum mainnet and you can select which token you want to receive on the mode network. Now, I do recommend waiting until gas fees are low to make your bridge transaction from the mainnet because you'll save a lot of money. But once you're ready, just hit bridge and then confirm the transaction in your wallet. So this transaction here cost me about $4 to bridge that 0.25 ETH. And once you do make that bridge transaction to mode, if it doesn't pop up automatically to add the network to your wallet, then you can use this information here to import it manually by going to your wallet clicking on add network and then entering the information listed here. So that is step one. And once you bridge some ETH, your points total will increase. Although note that this is an estimate and that the points will be officially confirmed and actually set in stone every Wednesday. So every week it will be officially updated. Now at any point, if you want to bridge out from mode back to ETH, you can do that using their official bridge. Although there will be a seven day transaction lockup. However, if you want to get around that, you can actually use the OWL2 finance bridge, which has already integrated the mode network. And you can use OWL2 to bridge to and from mode, including different L2s. So you'll save a lot of money on transaction fees that way. Although, like I said, it's important that you use the official bridge at least once to get some points. Now, aside from past on-chain activity and bridging TVL, there's a few other things that you can do to maximize your airdrop qualifications. One is referring people to this, but the other things are to interact with the ecosystem applications and then to complete quests. So let's move now to number four and five. Although if you have people to refer to number three, definitely do that. So the ecosystem page on the mode website lists all of the different applications that you can interact with to try to increase your chances of getting a larger airdrop. There's actually quite a few of them. And so I recommend using as many as you have time for, but there's also a few main ones. So I'm gonna focus on those now. And then after that, I'm actually gonna show you a few bonus activities that you can do that not many people have talked about so far. So stick with me. So currently there's three featured applications, Kim Exchange, Ionic, and Mode Naming Service. And you definitely should interact with all three of these at a bare minimum if you're not gonna interact with each and every single one in the ecosystem. So Kim Exchange, as you probably could have guessed, is just a simple DEX where you can swap to and from different cryptocurrencies. So go ahead and connect your wallet and then you're gonna to wanna to make a couple of swaps to and from different coins. So let's say I'm gonna start by swapping 0.05 ETH 
to USDT. Always make sure that the price impact of your swap is going to be as low as possible. So less than 0.5% is quite good. So I'm gonna hit proceed to swap and then I'm going to confirm this transaction in my wallet. The gas fees are quite low on mode. It's 50 cents for this transaction. So let's hit confirm. Now, once the transaction is confirmed, you get this pop-up. And if you want to see the balance of tokens in your wallet, it doesn't show up automatically. So I recommend hitting view on Explorer and then select the USDT token or whatever token you swapped into and then click add token to MetaMask so that you'll be able to track your balance and remember that you have it. So that's gone through and I've now moved $100 in volume through the Kim exchange. The more that you can do, the better. Now, the other thing that you can do is is to provide liquidity into one of the liquidity pools. So since I have ETH and USDT, I can make a deposit into the ETH USDT pool, but there's a couple of other different options here as well. I recommend sticking to the verified pools because with the unverified pools, you've got a bunch of random coins, meme coins and things that could go to zero at any point. So if you're dealing with large amounts of money, especially definitely just stick to the safe stuff. So let's make a deposit into the ETH USDT liquidity pool. At this point, you wanna hit create a position and you're going to need to deposit an equal amount in dollar value of both USDT and ETH. So let's say I deposit 50 USDT and the equivalent $50 worth of ETH, I would hit approve USDT. This is gonna allow the spending of my token. And when you set the spending cap, make sure that you're setting the cap to the actual amount that you're trying to approve. Don't set it to unlimited because there's more risks associated with that. Once the token is approved, you can actually add it to the pool and I'll go ahead and confirm this transaction. So in total, I've spent just a little over a dollar on transaction fees on the mode network so far. It's not too bad. Now, when the transaction is completed, if you want to, you can hit view on an Explorer and you can add the LP token to your wallet so that you can track your position and remember that you have it. So if I add this, it's just gonna show the balance of that liquidity position. Otherwise, you can click on this to view your position and this is where you can track all of the LP deposits that you've made. So you're now earning an APR on this and you can withdraw it at any point. Now notice that in the amount it says $80. It's actually wrong. There's some issue with the price oracle, I guess, because it's 50 USDT and $50 worth of ETH. I think that the price oracle for USDT is glitchy right now because it should be a total of 100. Anyways, as long as the amount of tokens is all there, then it's all good in my opinion. So you can add liquidity to different pools if you want to, but I'll leave it at that. I think you get the idea. Now, the next app that you're definitely gonna wanna interact with is Ionic. This is a DeFi platform on the mode network where you can lend and eventually borrow, although right now all you can do is lend. So once you open the app and connect your wallet, these are the different assets that you can lend to the platform. You can supply USDC, USDT, wrapped Bitcoin, or wrapped ETH. So since I have some USDT in my wallet, I'm just gonna go ahead and supply some of that. And again, as with everything, the more that you supply, the better off you'll be. But even if you can just supply say 10 or $20, th that's better than not interacting with it at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and supply 50 USDT to the Ionic platform. This is a pretty simple process. You just have to confirm two transactions again in your wallet one to allow the token spending, and then the second is going to be to actually make the deposit. Great, so that deposit has gone through. They haven't actually set up their dashboard yet, but I can see here under supply balance that I've deposited 50 USDT here. And if I want to, I can withdraw that from the platform at any time. And same with the liquidity position, you can withdraw that at any time. It also looks like there's gonna be a point system for Ionic, so they might have their own separate airdrop as well as an application. Oh, and one final thing, since this platform accepts only wrapped ETH and not regular ETH, there's actually a little wrapper button right here. And if you click this, it allows you to wrap your ETH. And the third and final must interact with application is the mode naming service where you can get a dot mode domain. So this is like any other naming service, just search for the name that you want. And wow, it looks like someone has actually rugged me and registered CryptoCove.mode. So I've gotten to the point now where people are trying to steal my Web3 identity. So I cannot mint CryptoCove.mode, but I can mint CryptoCove with a C instead of a K, which I probably would have used for my channel name in the first place if that was available. So let's go ahead and register this domain name. Just select whichever name you want that's actually available. And you can actually try and speculate on something that is actually 
let's say, going to be more valuable. Obviously, a lot of first names are going to be valuable, but most of them are probably going to be already registered. But if you can find a name that has potential and is actually still available, then you can try and register something like that. Wow, bob.mode is available. Uh, but the three-digit domain names are actually much more expensive. So, so it's actually going to be cheaper for you if you get a five-plus digit domain. Anyways, let's go ahead and register Crypto Cove with a C.mode. So this is only going to cost $5 per year, which is on par with the Ethereum name service. So just a couple of clicks here, click register, and then confirm the transaction for $5 plus gas fees. And if you want to, you can actually link your social media profiles to the domain name as well as set a photo avatar. So you can just click on the edit button and change this information. It will charge you though to make these changes. It's gonna be small transaction fees, but there is a fee every time you change the records. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. Okay, so those are the three featured apps so far. It looks like there will be more coming as well as a bunch of different quests. But now let me show you some bonus things that you can do to increase your chances of getting a larger airdrop from Mode. For starters, I did notice that the Mode network is actually partnered with the Pyth network. So it's possible that Pyth stakers could also get some type of allocation from Mode. Definitely not confirmed, but we've seen that Pyth stakers are going to be getting airdrops from different protocols and different layer twos. And so if you are staking Pyth or considering staking Pyth, this is a useful piece of information, something to keep an eye on. The other thing is that Mode has developer docs that show how you can deploy smart contracts using applications like Third Web or Remix. Now, I've done previous tutorials on both of these platforms showing how you can deploy smart contracts like ERC20 tokens, and now you can actually do that on the Mode network. So it's pretty simple. With just a few clicks, you can deploy a token, and all you have to do is make sure that down here, it's selected as the mode network. You can search for it, or you can just change your wallet to the mode network, and Third Web should be automatically able to detect that. So, deploying a smart contract, like a token contract on Remix or Third Web, could be something to do. It's gonna set your wallet apart from other people that don't have that type of developer activity. And finally, on the Layer 3 platform, there's actually three quests open right now for Mode Network that you can complete, which are pretty basic. These aren't actually the official Mode quests, but they could help you for the Mode airdrop for sure. So do check out the Mode quests on Layer 3. Oh wow, they literally just launched a fourth one as I refresh the page. But these will be useful things to complete. And then aside from all of that, like I said at the beginning, you can interact with as many of the different apps in the ecosystem as you have time for because there's quite a few of them. So that's it for now, although there probably will be more and there's gonna be more quests at some point. Stay tuned, I'll bring updates in my daily updates, but if you do all of those things right now, that's a pretty good start for you that should help you get going. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found this useful. And if you want to use my referral code for this, you'll definitely help out the channel. See you later and have a great day.